So in this video, I'm going to analyze uh, this grocery store uh, data set to answer a question based on a scenario. So the scenario is the following. A small grocery store carries a number of items, groups of which tend to be purchased together. Organizing the grocery store by placing items that are purchased together near one another is believed to increase sales. This is a general belief uh, that applies to many grocery stores. A decision was made to compile data on purchases of items over a period of time. Data on 550 purchases was compiled from the, the, the grocery store. And this can be, uh, th this type of data can be collected from uh, point of sale uh, machines that are uh, used by the grocery store. Question. How should the items be organized in the grocery store? So this type of analysis done uh, via structure equation modeling is a little bit cumbersome, but it shows how it could be conducted um, for an actual application uh, in a larger grocery store. You would probably want to use a specialized system that would do just that or mostly uh, this type of analysis that will be demonstrated in this video. So the variables that we have are milk for milk purchase in dollars, cheese, eggs, sardine, tuna, chicken, chips, candy, soda, hair, banana, apple, uh, plastic uh, plates, spoons, uh, spoon, knife. So these are utensils. And so this is a small grocery store. Here's the data on the first sheet of the workbook. I already read the data into our PLS, so the data is here. So I will I do this in two stages. First, I will identify the uh, a first grouping of the items that are purchased together with one another into what I will be representing here as latent variables. And then I will check correlations among the latent variables to decide how to place them on the store. So let's first find the groupings. So open the option uh, view. Uh, and save correlations. I'm interested in the correlations. So what I will do is I will group. I could save this into a file. I'll just leave this uh, window open while I go to uh, step four. So I will group items that have uh, a correlation, that have correlations that are greater than 0.5 with one another as items that are purchased together. That, that's typically what happens if people are coming to the store and buying uh, items together. So for example, when people come and buy milk, they usually buy cheese and eggs as well because correlation between milk, cheese, and eggs uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, 0.5 or greater, right? So in this case, it's greater than 0.6. And we can see that cheese has a correlation with uh, uh, milk that is uh, 0.625, and eggs has a correlation with milk that, that's 0.642. Milk uh, has a correlation of one with itself. So this is what you see in, uh, in a table like this. So what I would do is I will create items and I will call these milk, cheese and eggs since two of them are dairy I will call them dairy so I have a latent variable that refers to dairy now I will look, so these three are, are already grouped. Now I'll go to this other one, sardine, and I'll see which ones are highly correlated with sardine, and it's tuna and chicken. So what I'll do is I'll call these meat. So 
for the tuna and chicken. And they are grouped already. Now I'm going to go to the next set, which starts with chips. So as I can see, chips, candy, and soda, they are highly correlated with one another, these three. So point correlations are 0.5 or higher. So I will call them something and an appropriate name here would be junk food, right? Chips, candy, and soda. Now I'm gonna go to the next group. And let's see. Uh, pear, banana, and apple are highly correlated with one another, and the correlations are greater than 0.5 for the three of them, so I'll group them. And I'll call them fruits, or, or just fruit. And the next group are the uh, food utensils, right? So they are highly correlated with one another. As I can see here, correlations are 0.5 or higher. So I will group them into the final group. So I will, I will just call them utensils, UTLS. So now I have my my variables. So I'll save this. I, I will not create any links among the variables. For this application, creating links is irrelevant. As I have been doing, I will change the settings for linear association. I'll keep this out of model analysis algorithm because I have uh, I have uh, the indicators grouped into latent variables. And I'll run my analysis. And if I look at uh, loadings and cross loadings, I should see high loadings uh, of the items on their particular latent variable. So as you can see, the loadings are all higher than 0.8, which is an indication that uh, the, the, these items do belong to these groups. Now, Another thing that I will do is go and look at latent variable coefficients and make sure that these latent variables are not measuring the same thing. And as we can see here, they are not because they are very, the collinearity is very low because we have all of these uh, full collinearity variance inflation factors lower than 3.3. So we have, uh, uh, we, we, we can say that they are measuring different things, these latent variables. So my first grouping seems to have been successful. Now, let's assume that in this store, we have essentially one shelf here in the middle. So now I need to figure out how I'm going to group these items in the shelf. So what I'll do is I will go to the option view correlations among latent variables and this first option correlations among latent variables and square roots of the AVEs on the diagonal. The diagonal I will ignore for this particular application. I will focus on the correlations. So those items that are highly correlated I will group together. So these are the latent variables are groups of items so what I'll do is I'll group these latent variables together, assuming that there is uh, a uh, shelf uh, in the middle of the store, one main shelf with two areas on both sides. So I will define my model and what I'll do is I'll use those correlations to decide where I'm going to place these latent variables in the store. So I'm assuming that there is one shelf in the middle of the store. So 
What is dairy correlated with? Dairy is correlated with fruit. So what I'll do is I'll have dairy and fruit next to each other. And let's see uh, meat, what meat is correlated with. Meat is correlated with utensils. So I'll have meat and utensils close to each other. And let's see what junk food is correlated with, highly correlated with utensils. So junk food next to utensils, meat, so on. So I'm assuming that there is a shelf here. So on one side of the shelf, so let's say people are entering the grocery store through here. And uh, then they, they see the shelf in the middle. So I have dairy and, and, and fruit on one side meat utensils and junk foods uh, on the other side. This would arguably be a configuration that would increase sales for this grocery store. So here, there is nothing else to do to answer this question. The, the, the question that was posed uh, in the beginning, which was, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to save. Uh, so let me let me go back. So I had uh, meat. So dairy and fruit, meat utensils and junk. I'll just save my model. And I, I, right now, there is nothing else I can redo the analysis it, it, and, and to complete the, the project file so that I can save it. And I'll save the project file. But the answer would be that this would be the configuration in the store. Now, you could have some, something a little bit different. So, for, for example, you could have these three items on this side and uh, dairy and fruit on this side. You could have some variations here depending on the correlations. So if I look at the correlations, uh, I could one could arguably say that uh, so fruit highly correlated with uh, dairy. So it is here. So I could have fruit here in place of dairy and dairy down here. Um, what else? Utensils, highly correlated with junk food, so it's close to that, and uh, then uh, correlated with, uh, with fruit. Uh, no, it's inverse correlation with fruit. So they are these inverse correlation means that they are not purchased together. So typically, if someone buy utensils, they do not buy fruit or dairy. So, uh, arguably, because the utensils, you really need them to, to eat meat, right? The meat items. So, but this would be, there could be variations, but this would be uh, one answer that would be valid to our question, which was, how should the items be organized in the grocery store to increase sales? Uh, this would be one valid organization. And as I said, for a larger uh, grocery store, arguably you would use uh, something other than this technique. You, you would use a more specialized uh, software that would do, do just this more automatically. But the principle is the same. It's grouping uh, items that are correlated. There is no need to create arrows here. We don't have a model where we are predicting that certain variables cause others. We just want to, using uh, correlations, we want to group the items in the uh, grocery store. And this concludes this demo.